I want to know. I have a feeling. Did your did your work? Did your content create creation bug hit you? Did it all start uh, with your work with Evergreen four years ago and back in hmm. 2017? Can you also explain briefly what briefly. that what that if it's even possible? I mean, you only did like a six plus part video series on it. Twenty four. Oh what? <laughs> <laughs> Plus the 110 I had to do to get all the material out there. So this was a college that you attended and graduated yeah. from. And yeah, basically it was a, it was a very good example of of like maybe CRT Marxism in, in action in higher yeah. ed, like yeah, yeah. happening the, in real time takeover. What happened in the spring of 2017 and like over that week period or two week period was the same exact thing that happened over the summer. And. 2020 uh, with the way in which Black Lives Matter protests and the ways in which the different specifically democratic leadership in the cities that the uh, ostensibly Black Lives Matter themed uh, protests, which doesn't mean that they were all everybody was acting in there was acting with the same goal, but the same dynamics happened with wild youth and inept leadership. And it was all contained in this little liberal arts college in the middle of the woods in Olympia, Washington, over the course of a couple of weeks. And it was all live streamed and it was all at a public college. So all of the training videos and the workshop videos and the seminars and the lectures, those were all recorded and state documents that I could, uh, FOIA or public record request, as well as all the email back and forth between all the different professors. So I, I was on the campus. I saw these events. I saw everything that built up to those events with students being more and more egregious in their protesting um, patterns and their behavior and more and more unhinged in their rhetoric. While at the same time, I was watching the college push very hard this what we call CRT or this anti-racist doctrine and dogma into the mix, by which I mean doctrine and dogma. These were things that you had to obey and could not question, or there was very little allowance for questioning. Uh, and that included also the enforcement out of nowhere of this gender ideology, including declaring your pronouns and all of a sudden sex doesn't exist, you know, and we can just identify into all these categories that didn't even exist 10 years ago. Like, no, metrosexual is a, that's been around. For metrosexual a was, was, I think, the, the very first one. Was that, was that the original um, alternative? Yes, remember in like, the, yeah, it was the late 90s, probably the yeah. early aughts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, metrosexual would be like, oh, you use hair gel and you wear pants <laughs> that fit you. Oh, back when it was fun. Back when you could be like, call people gay for yeah, fun. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. still do it, but. You know, yeah, yeah. that was the so first category. They, um, you know, so in this, over this, you know, over one week, uh, almost towards the end of the semester in 2017, the students took over campus, took faculty or and senior administration hostage, barricaded buildings, went car to car looking for a certain professor, Brett Weinstein, and, you know, projecting all this crazy behavior onto the internet. And that got a lot of attention specifically in alternative media because mainstream media outside of uh, Fox News didn't want to cover it um, because it was giving a lie to all of the rhetoric that they themselves, the New York Times, uh, is it the Post, Washington Post, whichever one dies in darkness, um, yeah, this is oh, an examiner and a post. A I think yeah. it's the post. Yeah. So a lot of the left-ish or liberal-leaning newspapers didn't cover it because the, the students were acting in this anti-racist uh, dogma or doctrine that they themselves had already um, put their money on uh, for a variety of reasons, not least of all because of the rise of Trump. So... So it was crazy. And uh, so alternative media, they ran with it, but nobody really knew the inside story. So I started publishing all the videos and the internal documents and collating all of the different live streams. And I collect I collected just hours and hours of footage and thousands of pages of documents. And then I distilled it. I distilled it down into about a nine hour documentary that just goes through everything. Well, not everything, but it kind of establishes what was going on, ties it not to the student's behavior. It's not about judging their behavior. It's about seeing that this behavior is tied to these ideas. And what is the causality there?
between this CRT anti-racist stuff and sudden, uh, a sudden drastic reboot of racism just in the opposite color scheme from historical American uh, racism. So. That sounds like a lot of work. Sounds like a lot of uh, hours, a lot of... Well, what else are you supposed to do? I mean, just <laughs> sit around and make a 60-minute comedy routine? I mean, not everybody has yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like to, that's a lot for one project, but I mean, you have you are, yeah. you have to obviously be very committed to, I, I guess, sort of yeah. illuminating the why, right? Because if you judge these people outright, and it it must have been tricky. Did you ever feel like, well, I'm just a white man. No one's going to take my thoughts seriously, and it feels like that's that's one of the tactics that gets a lot of people to not be in the conversation. It's like, well, you're white, so just shut up. Nobody cares. Even like in in the in the footage you had in your videos, was so, so many students screaming over and over, like, sit down, shut up, you're white, and it, these would be yeah. like professors, white like people to the back, white people go officials. get us water, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was weird because I saw that stuff rolled out it got really heavy in 2015 and it just didn't make any sense to me. I mean, like, why would I start treating people like a race? And I, I grew up, I, I was born in 76, grew up in the eighties and the nineties, you know, racism isn't solved, but I was taught through the media and through my society to focus on the content of character. First and foremost, the most important part of the human being in front of you is their individuality or their soul or whatever that is, that's their character. And so that's how I just, lived my life. And also I worked a lot with children from a variety of races and socioeconomic backgrounds. And when you're working with a two, three, four-year-old, five-year-old, you don't see a racialized being. I mean, to a certain extent, the one identity category that does have a manifestation, um, and certain people don't want this to be true, but it's true that there is a difference between boys and girls and that sex category does what? have, <laughs> it does actually on a social level, not just a biological level. Uh, we're not just blank slates. It's not just socialization that makes the woman, uh, which is not just an argument made by gender ideology, but by proto gender ideology being uh, certain strains of feminism. They don't think that there's any difference between males and females. So anyways, even when you're dealing with boys and girls and you notice some difference between them, you have to concentrate on the individual because what you're trying to create or co-create with that individual is that individual. Teach them how to be a human being. Teach them how to have a theory of mind, meaning understanding that the person that they're dealing with is just like them has the same parameters as them, the same desires and wants and angers and needs and greeds and all that stuff. So I just always focused on the individual. And then when this stuff started coming in about us declaring our privileges and, hmm. you know, watching these diversity, um, I did, a part checks or whatever they are, like put on the whiteboard and training race, class, sex, socioeconomic, and then like, who's privileged, you know, and, and it's the same thing that happened. In, this is tired, but same thing that happened in 30s Germany, where like, okay, who's the most privileged, because that's the enemy, we can start blaming all of our failures on this enemy. And I'm watching this in a college, I'm like, what are you doing? And then also on top of that, any sort of question was a no, no, you couldn't actually argue this stuff out. Uh, you had to do it behind the scenes. So it just didn't make any sense to me. So when I started speaking out, yeah, I did have a period of feeling really bad. I'm like, oh, no, I'm criticizing black people. But I'm like, I'm not criticizing black people. I'm criticizing people who were put through this ideology that made their race the most important thing. And 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 there's no reason to not criticize somebody's idea or their character based on their race. That's another form of racism. And then it also doesn't allow these people to have any sense of responsibility for their actions if they're never criticized. And that's another thing that the college failed to do. It didn't criticize those students. It didn't criticize itself. Uh, so part of my project was to, you know, as an evergreen graduate, provide a feedback for the college as a college or insofar as it still is a college oh wow so this was not just for fun like you you did you made these videos and this content like just basically for the benefit of the college as well well there's different reasons why but the uh the evergreen model of education is very particular and one of the things that you do at the end of every class and most people that go to evergreen and it's still functioning barely right now is that you take one course for the entire quarter 
or for the entire year. And at the end of every quarter, you get graded on what you do, but you also do a self-evaluation. What did I learn? What am I struggling with? The goods and bads. And then you also give a uh, evaluation of your teacher. Your teacher evaluates themselves and they evaluate you. And that all goes in, not their self-evaluation, not your evaluation of them, but your own and their evaluation of you that goes into your transcript. So by the end of an evergreen education, you have a transcript like this. You don't just have a bunch of code uh, grades because there's kind of no grades. Um, but so it was kind of the evergreen model of education to take four years to process my four years of evergreen and then to purpose that as an evaluation, not just of evergreen, but all of academia. And then all and then that led me to all these other issues. It's like all this stuff that is nominally about race is also being replicated in gender and in the relationship between the sexes and everything except for class now. Class is the last thing on the left. So. We can't talk about class. <laughs> no. So we can't flip um, over that rock. There's a lot of worms under there. That's probably the that's the biggest. We should have started with class, but that's well, uh, they that's did all start with class, but they didn't work. It didn't work. Class doesn't work. So they went social. That's why it's called social Marxism because the class uh, dynamics. You can't teach blue collar people to to be communists because it doesn't actually work for them. It doesn't actually pan out for blue collar people. So the elites decided to make it more about identity. Uh, and I'm really distilling these ideas, but they made, they did the same kind of oppressor oppressed Marxist critique. And then they switched it from class to identity because that had, they thought that it would have more, um, more more footing more leeway and it actually does and it works it translates well to media so you can like with disney what disney is doing now is they're kind of breaking all the stories down and do identity and then just flipping all these identity things but everything's the same story about oppression and oppressed and oppression oh you mean oppressed. ruining them yes <laughs> no I, not even ruining them. they're just like there's nothing there anymore like i guess it is in, in a sense that the, insofar as they're ruining something that they already had they're not creating anything new they're just kind of replicating it into a very one-dimensional uh, story and there's so many different stories there's so many different stories it almost sounds like part of what evergreen did i mean could benefit a lot of university students like it's almost like uh i think the idea if, if at the end of every semester, every year of college, if I was able to reflect like, hey, what are my own strengths and weaknesses? Like, I think I could have really solved some of my own like study skill issues. And mm. um, I mean, that, that's something that everybody should, should, it's almost like kind of therapy in a way where you can like really analyze how you work and yeah. try to get better at it. 